Hello, my name is Jenna, and this will be my first book haul video, my first book tubing video, and I hope that you guys get something out of it. Previously on YouTube, I've done videos about photography and motivation and, and how to think of photo shoot ideas and such because I went to school for photography. I recently graduated in May, and ever since then, I've been kind of obsessively buying books, which is why I'm trying my first book haul. Um, so let's give it a go. Now, I've spent a while after graduation, you know, applying and looking for jobs, anything I can get to keep me busy for the summer until I move out of my hometown. And in the meantime, I had a little bit of money, just enough to get me by, but I'm also living at home for free. But I've also been to quite a few bookstores, and I've just kind of spoiled myself a little bit when it came to buying books. And I'll show you what happens when I'm just left alone in a bookstore. So the first set of books I got came from a bookstore in a little town, well, city, I don't know what to call it, called Cobleskill, New York, which is about a half-hour drive here, beautiful like, drive with mountains and hills and everything. Welcome to the Catskills. But, um, that, I didn't even know that store existed there. I totally forgot what it was called, but I had quite a fun time sitting on the floor and ripping books off the shelves that I wanted to check out. So, the first book I found was, of course, the Renee Magritte book, and I love collecting artist books, but I also love finding them for really, really cheap. And he's just a surrealist artist, a surrealist painter, and he influences my photography. And if you want to see more about my photography, I'll post my website in the doobly-doo. Yes, I'm a Vlogbrothers fan. And so you can see, you know, what I do and what influences me. But also, the literature I read really influences my work. So you'll probably see that once you get to know me a little bit more. I also bought a Francis Bacon book. This man is really, really weird. Really awesome painter. Creepy, but creepy is kind of my style. I then bought a Japanese woodcuts. Um, it just has beautiful prints. Very delicate little book. It came in a bag. But I really think Japanese art is beautiful, and even though it's very, very simple. And last but not least, I found this book last minute. Uh, it's called Junkie by William S. Burroughs, who I believe also wrote The Naked Lunch, which I tend to read one day. But of course, I haven't gotten there yet. I have a whole stack of books I still have to get through. But it just looked good, and it was, what, $3? You can't beat that. The next bookstore I went to was a little place called The Biblio Barn, and it's located in South Court in New York. And I've gone to this place quite a few times. An old friend has shown me the store, and it's basically this whole house. I don't, it doesn't really look like a barn, but it's a whole house like transformed into a bookstore. And the owners there, who are this adorable old couple, live in the bookstore. And, and um, they live like a few levels up. So there's like the main level upstairs, and then they have this little loft upstairs as well as their kitchen area and everything. But that sounds amazing, living in a freaking bookstore. So in that book, I found um, Aldous Huxley. And he wrote Ape in Essence here, but he also wrote Brave New World. And if you like futuristic books that will kind of freak you out, I recommend this man. I also found A Little Course in Dreams by Robert Bosnack. And dreams have always like been a huge interest of mine. I've been recording them for a long time now. And whatever I can pick up, whatever literature I can pick up on dreams, I just buy it. It was only four dollars. Last but not least, I bought a book called Myth and Reality, and the reason I bought this was because I, I just took a class my last semester at school called Myth in the Modern Mind, and I had a wonderful professor who made us read, like, older literature and contemporary literature, for example, American Gods and Benilla Gaiman and some H.P. Lovecraft books and other books like that, and we compared it to modern myths or past myths, whatever came up in conversation. So this book, I think, will be quite interesting to read, and it'll be even better now that I took their class. The next little stack of books I'm going to go through is from, well, one of them is from the Green Toad Bookstore, which is located in Oneana, New York, and it has a little cafe attached to it. But it's the only good store 
good bookstore left there, and I happened to find an Ursula Le Guin book there. Not so surprising. I bought The Left Hand of Darkness, and I mentioned earlier that I took a Myth in the Modern Mind class last semester, and we read one of Ursula Le Guin's books, and it was called The Wizard of Earthsea, and I wasn't the biggest fan of the book, but I had a lot of respect for it. You see, Ursula Le Guin works in interesting ways, and I drew out a little chart to help you understand how her books work if you haven't read them before. <clears throat> And basically, this is how a normal, you know, plotline works with the introduction and you're learning how the characters work. And then all of a sudden we have like, oh my god, something interesting is happening or something exciting is happening. And then we have the resolution and conclusion at the end. And, you know, that goes for a lot of plots. But Ur Ursula kind of writes books like this. Something happens and then it dies. Something happens and then it dies. Like, it just... It's all over the place, but it kind of keeps the readers on their toes. This book in particular, um, the first sentence caught my attention. And basically, on the planet Winter, there is no gender. And then during each May cycle, the people on this planet can become male or female. And this is something that humans find incomprehensible. So... It was a cheap buy, it looks really good, and I always like supporting local bookstores, so I bought that. And then my birthday came around, and I decided to treat myself to some books since people kept sending me money. And that's totally fine. If it's my birthday, money's totally fine. Um, but I bought A Working Theory of Love by Scott Hutchins because of um, Books and Quills buying it. And... Right when she showed the cover, I knew what it felt like, and if you know what this feels like, you know how awesome it is, and I don't know why. But I really never treat myself to hardcover books too often, like hardcover new books, so this was a real treat, and it's beautiful. I love the color, and I love the designs, and there's a rainbow spine. So this one should be pretty good. And my last hard edition, hardcover, um... Well, I have some ebooks here, so I'll go over that in a minute, but this is the last physical edition, physical book I bought. And I got this pretty recently. I wasn't able to meet Neil Gaiman while he was in Saratoga Springs, which is only about a two-hour drive for me. So I bought his book online, The Ocean at the End of the Lane. And not only is it beautiful, I love the cover. I love photography, obviously, and this is a beautiful image. But I got it signed. And I was so excited when I got in the mail this morning. It's pretty awesome. And of course, this already has pretty awesome reviews. So, if you're a Neil Gaiman fan, if you're a sci-fi fan, go ahead and buy the book. So, recently, I got an iPhone. And it's pretty awesome. But I also just got the Amazon app. Where you can scan books you find in stores and then compare them to to Amazon, like the prices and stuff to Amazon, and that's a real problem because I like to buy the books for as cheap as I can unless I'm like in a local bookstore where I can support local businesses and such. So I ended up scanning a few books in the store, and some of these are for my wish list, but that's what happened. So I have Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome, and let's see if there's an interesting cover on here. It's a little... A little messed up there, but it's there nonetheless, and it was pretty cheap. And then I bought, excuse me for the delays, I bought Feed by Myra Grant, and this book was also recommended by my professor who taught Myth in the Modern Mind, and basically it's about what happens after a zombie apocalypse, not during one, like in The Walking Dead, but after the zombie apocalypse. So that should be a little different and a little, maybe a little more fun to read. And then I also bought The Side of Paradise, which does not have a pretty cover, by um, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and I just recently read The Great Gatsby, so I I like his writing. It's a little slow sometimes, but it's fun. So I think that it'll be fun to read that book as well. So that is my first book haul. One last note, I'm going to put all the books I bought in my last book haul, which was like a month. It's like a month of buying books. I'm going to put all of them, the titles and the authors, down in the doobly-doo. 
and so you can check them out. Um, I also recently I'm trying to upgrade my Goodreads account, but I won't be posting like my entire library until I move out of this house because all my books are in storage right now. Not all of them. I have a selection, of course. I have just something to read. But a lot of them are in storage, so once I take them out of the box and everything, I'll put them on my new bookcase. Um, I will be posting all of the books I have and what I've read and what I haven't read on the Goodreads, and they'll be more updated towards the end of the summer. And if you liked what you saw today and you want to see more videos by me, I'll not only be posting, you know, photography and books and stuff, but I can try out vlogging or something. I've always, like, I've always been a part of the YouTube community, like, with the Vlogbrothers and who am I currently watching? Uh, Vlogbrothers, Books of Quills, Hannah Hart, and Charlie and Sokulak, Live Lava Live, Wheezy Waiter, like, all these YouTubers I've followed for years, and I really just want to immerse myself into the community even more. So if you like me, please subscribe. I'll really appreciate it, and I'll do... I'll do lots of videos, I hope.